Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Jacob and in this video we are going to be making a simple URL shortener. So this project, you type a URL in this box here, click on shorten, and you get this link right here, which obviously this would be your domain, and then slash, and then you have this funky stuff over here. Kind of looks like a hash, not really, um, but that just identifies the URL to the server. And then you click this URL, and it brings you, it redirects you to geeklaunch.net. So you could use this if you had a really long URL and you wanted a shorter one or something like that. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so I have a couple files set up for the project right now, two folders, a client folder and a server folder. Um, there's not really much going on here. I just have the baseline um, like boilerplate code set up for the server. If you don't understand this, I have a video uh, about the basics of Koa that um, you can watch and then you'll understand pretty much what's going on here. And then I have my main.js file. Not really anything interesting going on here yet. Um, here's our index.html file, link to our CSS, link to our JavaScript. Um, and then a header, input, button, and an output uh, field, and then some CSS, but we're not going to be going into that very much at all. Let's actually start off over here in our um, MySQL prompt and set up the database first thing, okay? So I'm going to say create database URL shortener, okay? And then we'll say use URL shortener. And I'm going to create table URL. We'll just have one table in this database. And that will have three columns. ID, which is an int, primary, key, auto, increment, uh, not, null, all the modifiers, of course. Then we'll have a short ID, which is going to be the uh, hash-like thing at the end of the URL, except it's just randomly generated. That's a var, par, var, char, whatever you want to call it. There's like wars about how you pronounce that. I don't really care. Um, and that is also not null. And href for the URL, which will make that we'll give ourselves plenty of room with a lot of characters there. Um, not null again. And finally, we will index the short ID because that's what we're going to be looking up. There we go, we set up our table and that's pretty much all we have to do in MySQL here. So let's next move on to our server. Um, like I said before, we have pretty much the boilerplate set up here for our server and I'm gonna add two routes a new route so that we can create new URLs and a director route, which is what um, requests are going to be forwarded to um, to redirect to whatever URL it's supposed to go to. So we'll start out and say router dot uh, post to new in context like this. Okay, and um, this is where we will create the new ones and then router dot get director of course that will be our redirector there obviously to do pretty much anything in this new one um, we're gonna have to use our database so I'm gonna install our dependencies because we haven't done that that'd be a good thing to do you know yarn um, add koa koa router koa body and then we also want Knex for interacting with our database, the MySQL driver, and um, short ID for generating our short IDs. And we'll let that run. So then I'm going to want to make constant Knex equals require Knex right here. And then we'll initialize that with this configuration. We'll say client is MySQL because we're using a MySQL server. Um, connection information here. Our host is localhost. Database base is um, URL shortener. And then we have our user and our password. And I have this 
config variable that I'm importing from this JSON file that contains my login information. So that'll just be config dot username for me and password is config dot password for me, but you can just substitute in strings here directly if you so desire. All right, so now we have our database connection set up. Let's actually allow us, let's make it so we can add URLs. So when we add a URL, we're gonna have to generate an ID for it. So I'm gonna say constant ID equals something. Um, we have to import our, or require our short ID library or dependency require short ID. Now we can generate our short IDs here. So I'm going to short ID dot generate and the href equals ctx dot request dot body dot href. So that's going to be in the body of the post request here. So then we'll just return connects um, URL will return the promise that will resolve when it has been inserted. So insert, I'm going to insert these values, short ID, it's ID, and href there. And then we'll simply, um, you notice I'm not doing like any checking, like is it a valid URL or uh, you know, if say we couldn't connect to the database or something, I'm not doing any error checking like that. Obviously, if this was, if you were putting this in production, you'd want to add error checking, but that's kind of, you know, boring and would take up a lot of time. So we'll just do this, um, no error checking. So then we're just going to return um, in the body, cdx.body equals um, short ID, ID so that we can generate the URL on the client side. You know, give them the ID that we generated for them. So that should be it for generating our URLs. And um, we'll implement this in a little bit, but let's make it so we can add URLs in the user interface first. Okay, so in our HTML file, we had the input, the button, and the output field. I have those set up here. And we'll say button dot add event listener on click. We're gonna want to do something and that something is going to be generate a new URL. So I'm gonna make function shorten, actually async function shorten. And I'll take href here. And here is where it gets interesting. I'm gonna say return, well actually, um, we'll say constant, sh the short ID is, and we'll use a fetch here, so fetch, now here is something that you want to pay close attention to. API new. Okay, this is not something that I have talked about yet. I have set up in my Apache configuration because I'm running the client on Apache on port uh, 8088. So that's Apache running there. And then the server is obviously running Koa um, and that's on port 8989. Okay but obviously there would be like, I think cross origin issues if I tried to send off a fetch request to, um, you know, local host, if I can spell it, local host. If I tried sending it off to 8989 when I'm on 8088, you know, sometimes it doesn't work. So I set up, I believe it's called a proxy pass or something like that in the Apache configuration. I will provide a link to that or that, that configuration will be in the description and will be also in the GitHub because this code is going to be on GitHub. So anyways, you would add that and then you can just reference API and that makes it really convenient. Okay, and then our method is post and headers because we're sending JSON, we have to say content type is application JSON and then um, body of our post request is JSON dot stringify href here. Okay. Oops, replace that. That's a comma. Um, wait. And then this one. Okay. So obviously this is returning. This is going to give us a promise. So we want to await that. But then, of course, that's just 
the results. So we have to like get the JSON from that. So we have to await that as well. So await dot JSON there. And then we have, since we're awaiting the JSON, then we also have to do parentheses and all that stuff. And then we can finally say short ID here. And then we can just return short ID. Not really doing anything else there, I guess. All right, now that that's out of the way, we will simply say um, on event, okay, on click, we want to shorten the URL and the URL is found in input.value. So I'm gonna, for now, just say console.log await shorten input.value. So that means this has to be a sync as well. And let's see if that works. Of course, we're gonna have to start our server. So node index.js, hope we didn't, don't get any errors. Whew. Okay, come over here, refresh, open up our console and click shorten. And we get this, that should be our short ID. So we can check that by coming over here to our MySQL prompt and saying select all from URL. And there we go, RYCB something. Yep, that is exactly right. Now let's convert that into a link. So I'll say constant link equals, and we'll use these nice template literal string things here. And we'll start with location.origin so that you don't have to change that if you actually put this online, slash L slash, and then um, await shorten href. So that will be our link. And then we can say out.inner HTML equals equals a href equals that. Um, target equals blank to open in a new tab. And then here will just be link. And that will also be link there. So now if I refresh, click shorten, oh, href is not defined. Right, this has to be input.value. What was I thinking? Okay, refresh, and there we go. Here's our link, click on it, absolutely nothing happens. Um, we have another interesting thing to discuss. This slash L here, slash L, that, um, it's not something that I have uh, explained. I have this .htaccess file here, and that's going to rewrite all of our requests that are slash L for link, slash L, and then the short ID is right here. It's gonna rewrite all of those to our API, which remember is being, um, the slash API is being forwarded to our COA uh, server, and then the director, which we haven't implemented yet. And then, of course, that's the short ID right here is the dollar sign one. So that's in our htaccess file. Make sure that you can actually write your htaccess file. You might have to change some configuration options to enable htaccess files. Anyways, that's how this is working right here. So last step, let's come over here and implement our director. We'll have to make a simple call to the database, return connects URL dot select href where um, short ID equals and then we have to add this param here that's going to be short ID short ID is ctx dot params dot short ID and then we get our result set which in this case should be only one and we will redirect to it. So ctx dot redirect redirect to um, well I'll say constant const href equals r zero dot href. Okay, there's our href, and then redirect to href. Meh. And ctx dot status. This can either be 301 or 302. 302 is obviously temporary. 301 is permanent. I'm going to leave it at 302 for now, just cause. All right. That should be our last step. 
So I'm gonna come over here, refresh this page, and it does not work because we hadn't restarted our server. Okay, now it should work. There, geeklaunch.net. Okay, so refresh this. I'll type in a different um, website, say google.com, shorten. Click the link, there's google.com, okay? Um, and if we head over to our database, there we go. We have two entries for geeklaunch.net and then one for google.com. All right, everybody. There you go. That is how you make a simple URL shortener in, let's see, what is all we used? MySQL, JavaScript, Koa, connects.js. And that's, that's the big ones. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Hope you learned something from it. My name is Jacob. Don't forget to subscribe and have a good one.